This is the procedural orange peel drywall material that we will be making in Blender today. And as always, if you have any requests on certain materials that you'd like to see me teach you how to create, always put those requests in the comments below. Without further ado, let's get right into it. So step one, as always, is we're going to be getting our point light and we're going to be moving it about up here and making sure we set the strength up to about 1000. These are the exact coordinates right here if you want to copy them. And then we have our camera here pointed right at the 3D cursor, which the focal length to about a 102. And it's just aimed right where our sphere is going to be. So start with the sphere, shift A, icosphere, subdivide it five times, right click and shade smooth like so. After you do that, make sure you save and everything, and then we're ready to get started. So to get started, we'll head over to the shading tab, get our workspace how we want it, drag both of these up by the corner, switch this to the 3D viewport, go to camera view, use the middle mouse button to scroll to the right, and now we're in Eevee. And if you want to copy my Eevee settings, we just check these three things, ambient inclusion, bloom, and screen space reflections. And then over here in color management, I switch it to medium, high contrast, and standard. You can use filmic and no contrast if you want. I just prefer this. It's not going to change the material at all. Other than what it appears like in your own viewport, it won't change the actual data or anything. So first step, we're going to hit new material, and I'm going to call it orange peel drywall because there are multiple types of drywall, and we're specifically making the orange peel drywall, like so. Because there's also other ones, and well, I might make those at another time, but for now we're doing the orange peel variation, which is what I see most often, at least in the houses I've been in. So, start off, we're going to hit Shift A, and we're going to search for a noise texture, like this. And then after that, we're going to make sure we have the Node Wrangler add-on installed. So edit preferences, search for Node Wrangler, make sure you check the box, and then you're good to go. So with the noise texture selected, we'll hit Control-T, move the object into the vector on right here, from the texture coordinate to the mapping. And then with the noise texture selected, we're going to hit Control-Shift and D, move it down here like so, and then hit Shift-R two times. So all that does is it repeats the action, so it gives us four noise textures like this. So next, we're going to hit Shift-A and we're going to search for a color ramp, like that, put it here, and then move the factor in right here, then we're going to hit Shift-D on the color ramp, move it down to line up with the other noise texture, and then Shift-R two more times as well. And then we can just plug on the factors into each other. A cool trick you can do is if you have the node ranger add-on installed, you can hold Alt and right-click from this node to this node, and it'll automatically do it. You don't have to go straight to the dot. Like if I go ahead and delete all these real quick, whoops, like that. Then I can just hit Alt and then go from one to the other like so. Oops. And it goes a lot faster. Just a cool trick. Anyways, now with this up on the top noise texture up here, we're going to preview it. Control Shift and left click on the color ramp. And then on the scale, we're going to be switching this to a 10. The detail to a 16 and the roughness to a 0.225, like so. And it's looking like this, and we're gonna leave the black and whites all the way on the ends. We're not gonna mess with them at all, and we're gonna, do the, we're gonna be leaving them the same on all of these as well. And the reason we put the color ramps here is so that we can tweak it a little bit later if we want to. But for now, we're gonna be leaving them all like this. So next, on this noise texture, we're gonna control shift left, click the color ramp. We're gonna be switching this to a 15. The detail to a 16 and then the roughness also to a 0.225 so this one is just looking a little bit the dots are smaller like so and if you want later like i said we're going to be messing with the color ramps but for now we're going to leave it there so we're just going to do this one next so scale to a 20 detail 16 roughness 0.225 on the last one we're going up to a 30 on the scale, 16 on the detail, and a 0.225 on the roughness. So currently, we have small, a little bigger, a little bigger, biggest. So next, we're going to be mixing these. So we'll hit Shift A, search for our mix RGB, right here. Then we can plug in the color into the top, and then the other one in here. And this is what it's looking like. I cannot talk. This is what it's looking like when they're mixed. So a little bit different, 
one, two, and then mixed. Very good. And like I said, we'll be able to play with these once the material is finished. We're not gonna be playing with them at all till the very end. So then we're gonna copy this, Shift D, down to here. Color into color one, color into color two, like so. And this is what this one's looking like. Now, we're gonna mix these two together. So I'm just gonna grab these and move them out of the way so we have more space. Oops, well, that's not what I wanted to do. Anyways, so we'll preview this. So let's shift A, search for a mix RGB right here. Put this color here, and then this color into color two. And when it loads, we get something looking like this. So on all these mix RGBs, make sure you go ahead and check the clamp if you're using Filmic. If you're using standard, it won't make a difference, but I'll check them just, just to be consistent throughout all types of the view transforms that I that are most commonly used. So combined, this is what it's all looking like. And as a, you know, we can do that a little bit, but I'm not doing it a whole bunch now. So we're gonna be plugging this into the roughness. There, where is the roughness? And then we're gonna hit Shift A, search for a bump node. Right here, we're gonna plug this color into the height, and the normal, into the normal. And then on the distance for this one, we are going to be changing it to a 0 0.025 on the distance, not the strength, on the distance, 0 0.025. And so if we preview our principal BSDF by uh, control shift left clicking, it's looking something a little bit like this, but just starting to look like the uh, orange peel drywall you'll see on a normal wall. And then you can drag in the colors a little bit, and what this will do is it'll this one, the more black it has, the uh, more the less rough it'll be, and also the less bumpy. The more white you drag in, the more rough and the more bumpy it becomes on all of them. So let's say we drag in the white on all of these, like this. It starts to become really rough. You can see it making a huge difference on this small one here. But anyways, you can play with these how you want. I'm going to leave them all the way here, so technically the color ramps aren't even needed. But for those of you who are looking for a more detailed look, I made sure to put these here. And who are going for some more style. Like, hey, maybe I want the bigger spots to be rougher or less rough. Then you can definitely do that. Because some walls are like that if you're dealing with surface imperfections and things like that. But for now, I'm just going to be leaving the color ramps all the way like this. Just to make keep it as simple as possible and keep it looking good. Because I'll have a different video on how to do surface imperfections. So we're not going to be messing with that at all here. But the color ramps are here for that in case of we need them. So this is almost done. But we do need a little bit of something different. Because if we put this on a wall right now, it'll look super flat everywhere. There won't be any, um, uh, not surface imperfections, I want to say. But any um, uh, actual material imperfections like... Not all drywall is perfectly straight. It's slightly warped. And so that's what we're going to be doing here. So we're going to be adding a musgrave texture and then plugging the vector into the vector. So then the stats on these, we're going to be switching the scale to a 3, the detail to a 12, the dimension to a 0.71. Like so. And if we preview this, it's looking something about like this. And it's looking pretty decent for the bump and stuff. So anyways, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this bump right here, we're gonna hit Shift D, move it down here, plug this height. Whoa, I don't wanna do that. Plug this height into here. And then we'll preview what this is looking like. It's looking something like this. So this is way too much bump going on here, so we need to switch the distance down. So I ended up switching it to a 0.0075. And this is just add some subtle height uh, imperfections in the material. So if we combine that normal into this normal, we can preview what both of the normals look like combined. And it's hard to tell the difference because it's so subtle. But as you can see on parts like here, it's higher than over here, even though the um, uh, orange peel stuff going on here is the exact same. This adds a little bit of uh, variation. So if we preview the final result, this is sort of what we're looking at right now, and it's looking quite good. However, I will say that maybe dragging in the big white one helps a little bit. 
to bring out the popcorn a little bit more as does the small one as you can see here this one kind of bring this one will smooth it out by dragging it in so if we bring the black up you can see the roughness going way down in these parts and it starts to give it a little bit more of a dotty look instead of being um, uh, so uniform uh, I'll, I'll personally leave it about right here so I'll point one seven and then that's the only one I'll mess with for now but you can do that with all of them and play with them to your liking they all make subtle differences in their own way but that's the only one that I will be making here so the black on the bottom to a point one seven three and I feel like that just adds a little bit more of pop to the the texture so then for the color this is the last part this can be whatever color you want for whatever kind of painted drywall you have so i personally ended up <clears throat> so i personally ended up using a sort of a one of the, those yellowish tan colors so on the hue i'm going to bring it up a little bit to about a point almost a point two close to there and the saturation not super saturated just a little bit, like a 0.4, something like that. And then the value. Ah, do I just leave it there? Or should I darken it? No, I'm not going to darken it. Point ain't good. One, that's a little much. Point nine. You know, the point 0.9 is looking pretty decent. And look at that. We got our painted orange peel drywall. And if we want to preview what this looks like on an actual wall instead of a sphere, we'll go ahead and do that real quick. So we'll hide this. We'll shift a mesh cube. Scale it up, not on the X. Control A. Uh, rotation and scale. This wall is ginormous. Let's get an actual size wall. So let's say, uh, say it's like two and a half meters high. And then say it's like um, five meters wide, something like that. Well, on the X, Control A, apply rotation and scale. Let's get the material. Orange peel drywall. Check this box so it doesn't ever disappear. And we show it up. And it's looking something like this. And I think it looks really, really, really accurate compared to a normal wall. Obviously, there aren't service imperfections happening on it. But it looks really, really good. <clears throat> something we can always do. If we don't like the result, if we think, oh... Why are the, the dots are a little looking a little bit big to me? I think they should be a little, a little bit smaller. Something we can do is simply uh, increase the values on these. So maybe move this, move this up to 20. This is up to 30. This is up to 40. Now the last one we can go to like 55, 60, something like that. About 66. And then we get a little bit smaller, depending on how fine you want your drywall to be. I personally like the original value is a little bit better. Although, you can go with this. We'll just leave it on this one, actually. Because, I don't know, this, this is more accurate. I'm looking. I'm literally looking at my own wall right now that has this exact thing going on. And I cannot decide if I like the other one or this one better. Hmm. Well, I guess you can look at your own walls and decide which one's more accurate. And so, I'm going to leave it here. I think this one's pretty good. But anyways, that is how you make a procedural drywall, orange peel drywall material. And I hope you enjoyed it. And so yeah, um, I will see you guys in the next one. Uh, adios.